What's going on YouTube? It's Mike here. Today guys in this video, I'm going to be giving my final predictions for iOS 8. So as you guys know, we are just about two weeks away, it is, I believe, from WWDC 2014, which will start on June 2nd, 2014. And as you know, we are most likely, almost positively going to be seeing iOS 8. Now before I get into all my predictions and stuff, I quickly want to tell you guys how you're going to actually be able to get iOS 8. And I'm telling this to you in advance before iOS 8 comes out. And it's simply through a site called UDID registrations.com packages start at 449 and just for under five bucks you can register your iphone ipod touch or ipad to run apple's latest ios 8 beta software i'm going to show you a little bit more now so here we are on udid registrations.com udid registrations registers your iDevice so you are authorized to test out the upcoming ios 8 beta firmwares their services start at only four dollars and 49 cents which is 20 times cheaper than enrolling in the ios developer program they have some fantastic packages and like i said basic udid registration starts at just under five dollars at four dollars and 49 cents and you can go all the way up to gold which is the best package for 12.99 per device and you basically get everything you get UDID UDID registration, expedited processing, certificate and provisioning, member status, device replacement, and it's just most capable. Basically, these are all the packages that they offer and they will all register your UDID and based on what you actually want to do, what features you actually want when registering your UDID and what you can expect for their service, of course, is up to you. I definitely recommend the gold package because it offers everything and quite honestly, for $13, it's probably the best plan on this page. You're literally getting everything from them. Payments can be accepted through PayPal, pretty much any major credit or debit card company, and even Bitcoin. A common problem people face is that their iDevice is not registered after after paying for the service. Well, that is actually wrong. You see, what's going on is Apple's servers are most likely being cramped since so many people are actually trying to register their devices and access the iOS 8 betas. Like I said before, you can assure that your device's UDID was properly registered. They use an automatic order processing system. And it means that the iDevice activation servers are overloaded, and it usually happens when new iOS beta firmwares are released, as many people are attempting to upgrade at once. And you can visit their troubleshooting site just exactly to figure out how to get your iDevice running if you are experiencing this error, but it should not happen for too long, as usually Apple is able to get their sites back up and running very quickly. So you'll need to allow some time and give everyone a break as your iDevice is slowly being registered, but of course it will. And they have some great support, so you can figure out just how your order is going, how your registration is going, and stuff like that. You can even place your ID into track.udidregistrations.com and figure out what the status of your order is from your UDID registration. I'll leave all links down in the description so you can go check them out and definitely get your UDID registered soon, probably before WWDC so you don't have to experience anything slow and so you can get ready for iOS 8 coming June 2nd. So yes, iOS 8. Obviously, I wanted to make a prediction video for you guys to let you know just exactly what to expect in two weeks at Apple's WWDC 2014. Now, iOS 8 is not going to be that big, and that is because of what iOS 7 actually did for Apple customers. iOS 8 should be getting some tweaks and small improvements and no real new designs or huge changes because that's ultimately what iOS 7 was. It was a complete UI overhaul. So my first thing is you should not expect any new designs, major changes to iOS 8, anything like that. You should just expect some many fixed things, a lot of bug fixes, some new features here and there, and a lot of improvements. And you know, we'll see what else Apple has in store for us. And at the same time, while Apple doesn't need to immediately change the design of iOS, they need to focus on OS X, which is now out of date compared to iOS and has the old iOS 6 and below look and feel on OS X. So Apple needs to take the next version of OS X, which is 10.10, we're currently on 10.9 Mavericks, and kind of stylize it to look like iOS 7 slash 8. And in order to do that, they'll need to use resources from iOS 7 and iOS 8 to kind of familiarize what OS X and iOS is, which was back a few years ago, the whole goal of something like Mountain Lion when Apple introduced Notes, Reminders, Game Center to the Mac from iOS. Now Apple needs to do that even more with things like design. So don't expect much from iOS 8, expect more from OS X is pretty much what I'm trying to say. So iOS 8 won't have any major improvements. One major thing we should be expecting in iOS 8 is something called Health Book. And to total everything up, I would 
call that health integration and fitness integration into the iPhone. Now, while Nike iPod has been present in iOS since for as long as I can remember, probably dating all the way back to something like iOS 2 or even iOS 3, Apple is looking to do it even more. And of course, that is with the iWatch. That probably won't be coming out in two weeks, more like September if it does at all for that matter. They're most likely going to delay it and not stick to a summer release like what's been being rumored. And so Apple wants to integrate quite a few things into this health stuff as well. And one of those main things is health book which is supposed to be an actual new app on the iPhone and as you can see a picture here here are some apparent alleged leaked screenshots of what health book is going to look like a few months ago earlier this year I actually showed you what the actual icon on the home screen looked like along with some new apps and I always say that we'll get to in a few minutes but pretty much this is what health book is going to be and it's going to track a ton of things health wise and fitness wise for you as Apple tries going toward that movement I guess and I, I I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to be doing with the iWatch as well and briefly, I want to go over those other three apps that we saw, which were Preview, Text, Edit, and Tips. And these, this was actually featured in those screenshots that I showed you, those two screenshots of the iOS 7 home screen or maybe potential iOS 8 alpha home screen even before beta of those four new apps and the three Preview, Text, Edit, and Tips. So Preview and Text, Edit, like I said before um, in my last video back in March, is Preview and Text, Edit are OS X apps that are currently available. And it's pretty much almost like a photo viewer. That's what Preview is. And Text, Edit is the older version of Notes, as Notes was brought to OS X in Mountain Lion. So I don't see why Apple wants to integrate this into iOS 8, to be quite honest. I don't see a need for it. Photos already provides a very good photo viewer, as well as something like text edit. I don't see why you'd need text edit unless there was some major feature that they integrated with Notes when you already have Notes on the iPhone with all this iCloud integration. Quite honestly, I prefer Notes over any uh, note service, even something like Evernote. And the last app was Tips, which I'm not 100% sure what Apple wants to do with that. I have a feeling it's going to have something like Reminders or something to do with health. I'm really not sure. We didn't get a full explanation about it, but apparently these three apps, including Healthbook, making four, are coming to iOS 8. So with all this health stuff involved, there are actually quite a few rumors going around about some new ear pods and even a new lightning cable. Now, I briefly read about this on Mac Rumors a little bit earlier, and from what I understand, Apple wants to integrate some type of biometric heart sensors into the actual Apple ear pods. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work, but somehow that's going to detect maybe your heartbeat or your blood pressure, something along the lines of that. And they're going to be almost like smart earbuds that will integrate with your iPhone, you know, when you plug them into the headphone jack and you'll be able to use something like HealthBook to determine maybe what your blood pressure is or your heart rate or how long you've run. I, I really don't know what they could do with this, but there's apparent rumors that the next EarPods will feature some sort of sensors in them to benefit or help your health or for your reference of your health. And along with that, there's some rumors that there may be a new lightning cable on its way. I'm not 100% sure what they'd actually do to the lightning cable. It is relatively new. It was only introduced with the iPhone 5 just about two years ago now. So I'm not 100% sure what and how they would change the lightning cable, but based on the earpods changing, there could be something with the lightning cable as well. Third party services are thinking about merging with Apple. As a matter of fact, Apple's thinking about merging with them the other way around. The first one is Shazam. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about this. Apple has a lot of interest in Shazam and actually wants to integrate it into iOS 8. Now, if you don't know what Shazam is, I actually do use Shazam. It's basically an app that you could download for free in the App Store. And if, like, let's say a song comes on or a TV show or anything for that matter, I think TV shows only maybe when you says Shazam it on. TV, what you basically do if like, oh, there's a song on, I want to know what this song is, but I, I don't know the name off the top of my head. We open the Shazam app, put it up to the speaker, wherever the music's coming from. It's got some great um, actual sound recognition. It will tell you what the song is. It'll let you listen to it on Spotify, buy it on iTunes. It's a very beneficial app. I've been using it for years now and it's fast, reliable, and Apple wants to somehow integrate it into iOS 8, maybe in the music app, maybe its own app. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if they want Shazam itself or Shazam's technology, it, well, we'll have to wait and see in the next two weeks. But they have a lot of interest in that, and they're going to most likely integrate it into iOS 8, kind of like they did with Facebook, Twitter, and stuff like that. Or it could just be the technology itself, and not credit Shazam at all. Speaking of music services, Apple wants to acquire Beats Music. And as you know, Beats by Dr. Dre, the headphones, Dre, Dr. Dre himself, 
the, all that kind of label. And Apple wants to have a part of that and they somehow either want to integrate Beats Audio into their next products, they want to use the streaming service Beats Music because iTunes Radio is failing a lot so they may just be using Beats to actually get their streaming service from them and completely kill off iTunes Radio or use the technology that Beats Music provides kind of like Spotify and actually integrate it into iTunes Radio. Currently I'm a Spotify subscriber. I've tried Beats Music because I got a seven day free trial and it's the same thing as Spotify, literally. I couldn't tell a difference. Obviously their UI and features are a little bit different, but it's the basic same uh, paid subscription service. I think Beats Music is 15 a month and I pay 10 bucks a month for Spotify. But ultimately if Apple integrated some sort of streaming service, maybe Beats uh, streaming service into their phone, I would definitely cancel Spotify and just pay one bill directly to Apple because I'm sure Apple could integrate it somehow into music and completely kill off iTunes radio, which has just been a failure for Apple since they introduced it last year and make the music experience better and have the awesome technology that Beats Music offers and the streaming service, of course. Aside from the streaming service, like I said before about Beats by Dr. Dre, I don't think Apple's going to start selling their own Beats, but I think instead they're going to somehow incorporate Beats Audio. You've all seen the phones with Android and stuff that have come out with Beats Audio. I think somehow Apple's going to integrate that because as you know, even though the speakers on the iPhones and the iPads and iPod touches are decent, they're not the best and I'm sure they could be made a little bit better using Beats technology. And maybe that'll even integrate into somehow Apple's new earpods. Who knows? Another big rumor is that Touch ID, which is only available right now on the iPhone 5S, a lot of people are saying and a lot of rumor sites are speculating that Touch ID will be opening up in two weeks for the first beta of iOS 8 to a lot more things, such as mobile payments, not only for things that you could download in the iTunes store, but even for physical goods. Now this is really cool, I'd love to see it expand. I think the whole fingerprint sensor idea is really simple and intuitive and it's a lot better than entering the passcode and I'd like if it worked a little bit more, maybe with some some passwords on apps. I know with a jailbreak tweak you could actually use your fingerprint to actually use on the fingerprint sensor to unlock apps. You could lock which apps you wanted, you could pick them. So to see Apple integrate a feature like this it would be really nice. You wouldn't have to jailbreak for that reason. And also it would be good for mobile payments as well like I said before, physical goods or other things, purchasing things through third party services. Instead of entering passwords for all these sites you could just simply use your fingerprint through the Touch ID sensor. So it sounds like Apple wants to expand that and it would make sense considering Tim Cook said he always had mobile payments in mind when they introduced the Touch ID sensor. While security was a major thing to cover with Touch ID, mobile payments was always something in mind. And I think they kind of tested that out with iTunes and I know a lot of times you always have to re-authenticate with your actual password. And so I just want to see Apple kill that completely and just require the fingerprint sensor and open it up to other third party services and other services Apple offers as well. And one of the last things I heard is split screen multitasking may actually be coming in iOS 8, but only for iPad users. Now this will obviously be for iPad mini users as well, so that'll Come in handy for me. Um, but basically split screen multitasking is kind of like what was on the Windows tablet or whatever it was called where you'd be able to kind of split screen multitask. I mean it's self-explanatory. While you'd be sending a message or typing an email to someone you could actually watch a video or reading something you could be texting something. You'd have it kind of like split screen so you'd be able to do two things at once. Now that while this was introduced years ago I am not sure if it was a very popular feature however Apple could bring it back to the table and maybe make it popular again. Maybe they could do something cool with it. I don't know it was just a rumor that was recently splashed in the wild so we'll see if that comes too. Now if you remember a couple months ago we got iOS 7.1 from iOS 7 which brought a lot of cool new UI changes and some new features here and there with a ton of speed improvements as well. As a matter of fact I gave up my jailbreak for iOS 7.1. That's how nice and how much I wanted iOS 7.1 to get rid of all the previous glitches. So I'm bringing this up because I don't think we're going to get a crazy amount of stuff with iOS 8.0. I think we'll have to wait for later releases of iOS 8 you know like 8.1 or even all the way up to iOS 9 until we can actually start seeing a lot of changes from Apple. You know, Apple just changed iOS completely with iOS 7, and now the main focus is OS X 10.10. So I think this year at Apple's WWDC 2014, they're gonna focus on transferring everything from iOS into OS X, including the all new flat design from iOS 7, which really isn't new to us anymore, and all the features that they brought with iOS 7, and the entire UI change to make OS X look just about the same. So, you know, the whole it could be the whole Apple family, 
kind of like it was a few years ago before iOS 7 came. So that's going to be Apple's main focus this June. Don't count on a lot coming from iOS 8, but expect a lot of cool new features to come maybe later on with later iOS 8 updates like 8.1, 8.2, maybe if they get that far, we'll never know. But just expect some big features to come now and even more to come later on. But not to worry, I still think Apple's going to bring a lot to the table in terms of features, improvements, and a ton of other cool stuff with iOS 8 this summer because ultimately Apple has to do something really cool to iOS 8 in order to sell their new devices this upcoming September and October slash November when the iPhone 6 comes along as well as the regular sized iPad update which will be the iPad 6 or iPad Air 2 whatever they want to call it and the third generation of the iPad mini. Now while that may be the iWatch or some other features that correspond to the new devices we won't know exactly but so they may not introduce, like I was saying before, they may not introduce those new big features until the actual new devices come later on this year. But don't worry, I do think Apple's going to bring some cool stuff to iOS 8. And just like I was saying, major feature additions and upgrades and stuff like that where it's like a big deal will come with actual new devices. So for example, FaceTime with iOS 4 on the iPhone 4 iOS 5 had Siri, iOS 6 had the new maps, and iOS 7 had the design overhaul. So it may take some new devices to actually bring iOS 8 even up more than what it may be introduced in June. But still, we might get a lot out of it. Before I end this video, I just wanted to go over some dates on when you can expect all the iOS 8 releases to make my final predictions for this video. So the first ever release of iOS 8 is definitely going to be June 2nd, 2014, because that is the first day of WWDC 2014. And as you know, the way it's worked for many, many years now, Apple always brings the first beta on the first day of WWDC. So you can expect that to come out the day of a few hours, maybe after the conference, or maybe just an hour or two after the conference. Every year it gets a little bit faster, so be looking out for that. And then of course there'll be beta updates throughout the summer that you can expect, of course. I'll be making videos every time there's a new beta that comes out. And you could finally expect the final release of iOS 8 this upcoming September, which should be two days before, it should be on a Wednesday, a Friday iPhone release. And that's pretty much it. But there you go guys, that is my final iOS 8 predictions. I hope you guys are excited for iOS 8. There should be a decent amount of features coming, like I said. You know, Apple introduced a lot with iOS 7, but I still think they're going to be bringing a lot to the table with iOS 8 with a lot of major improvements improvements and some changes here and there and they do have to introduce some cool things here and there otherwise you guys wouldn't download it but that's it for this video if you liked it please do some comments below on your thoughts of course rate give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below and i'll see you guys in the next video